Hey there, this is what we're doing in the Intellectual Property School. There's gonna be more hands-on training and I'm gonna to talk to everyone that's in the school. It's gonna take me a while to get this done. Now, what are we gonna learn in the Intellectual Property School? Learn how to set up our corporate structure, learn how to set up our operating company, learn how to set up our first business, and a whole lot more. And let me go ahead and put this out here. The price of the intellectual property school is at an all time low. And as we get into August, the price is going to go up. So if you want to go in and I got a question for you and let's say I was charging $10,000 for the intellectual property school and this $10,000 investment in yourself helped you make six figures for the rest of your life. That's what we're doing. We're going to teach you how to make money for the rest of your life. And one of the things that happened to me is when I went through the sales training, this is stuff that I still use today, 20 something years later. So this is what you need to do. Go below, fill out the application, book a call, so we can discuss your future into intellectual property school. I, I got this comment. This comment was, we should stop focusing on trying to become individually wealthy. Black folks were sold the goods that most, it was something that was pretty much saying that instead of seeking individual wealth, that we should seek collective wealth, we should work together as a group. And it was one of the craziest things I ever seen. Here's the deal, starting a business and working hard, uh, I had an intellectual property school application phone call today that was very, very exciting. This individual already has a business, this individual's already making money, just needs a little bit more help, and they're gonna be a perfect fit for the intellectual property school. Now, start a business, and then you create wealth for yourself. Let me explain to you why starting a business and creating wealth for yourself helps out the larger society. Number one, this is what happened to me. I started making money and I moved and I lived in a better neighborhood. Like this weekend, I was in Tampa because that's going to be part of my Florida situation. And the part of Tampa that I was in was really nice. And there was like from the airport to the hotel, didn't go to the hood, didn't go to any bad areas. The area I was in was very high tone, very nice. And I've become accustomed to that. I cannot go back to the hood. I cannot live there. And one of the things that happens to you as you begin to matriculate is you become, in my opinion, a better person. Now, let's go ahead and talk about what is becoming a better person. Number one, you can become charitable. It's kind of hard to help your friends out. It's kind of hard to help people out when you don't have no money. It's kind of hard. So one of the things that happens is you can become more charitable. You can get bigger tips. You can become that person in society that people's like, I want to be like him. So when you become a better person, you become more charitable, you become more caring, you do things to help others. And this is why focusing on individual wealth helps out the greater society if you are at heart or a charitable person. Money's an amplifier. Money will amplify who you are and what you are. Give you an example. If you are a little kid that used to go to the woods and rescue animals and save hurt dogs, hurt cats, hurt rabbits, and look at them, if someone gave you a lot of money, you would use that money to facilitate your natural gifts, your natural caring habits. Now, if you were a crackhead and you got a lot of money, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna make the crack dealer rich because you're gonna keep doing crack. What's gonna happen is your crack level usage is gonna skyrocket. You're probably gonna kill yourself. And there was this guy, he was uh, a bum. Let's just go ahead and say he was a bum. And they asked him what he, what he would do if he won a million dollars. And his exact answer was, I would get me some hookers and blow. Hookers and blow. So money will amplify what's already in you. If you see a person with money, and this is one of the things I have noticed that typically when I encounter good-hearted, charitable people with money, they do good things. They help people out, typically. And there's another group of the selfish and self-entitled. They use all their money on themselves. But 
at the moment, I want you to go around your town. There are parks, there's, and these, there are parks, there's sanctuaries, there's things that rich people with money have donated to the city. So when you focus on getting individual wealth, this makes you a person that can contribute to the greater society. Now, let's go ahead and talk about building the wealth as a collective. Right now, well, let's go back in 2020. 2020, the government was giving out massive sums of money, massive sums of money. In 2020, it started the greatest fraud scheme that has ever hit the United States of America. There are some people who are calculating that the United States government was scammed out of a trillion dollars, a trillion dollars. Now, I want you to stick with me here, okay? If these people, now these people who scammed the government out of a million dollars, these people who took. I did a video talking about, it was real interesting how all these people who claimed to be successful were taking this PP money and all this other stuff. Now, what did these people do with this scam money? They bought Lamborghinis, they bought Rolls Royces, they bought jewelry, they bought high-end real estate. None of these people who scammed the United States government out of a trillion dollars actually used any of that ill-gotten money to help their fellow man. The greatest scam that has ever hit the United States was the transmission and the taking of, because there's one guy who says, because there was one guy who was um, doing cybersecurity and he warned the government, he says, if you do not put safeguards on this money, we're gonna see the biggest scam ever in history. And they didn't put the safeguards on the money and this is why literally you can see videos of people who are going to jail for PPP fraud, EDIL fraud. They're literally going to jail. They're going to jail because they actually stole money, lied to the government, manufactured documents, and these people only use that money to help themselves. And this was the collective. It would have been interesting if they had taken this PPP money, this EDL money, started a business, and like, I'm gonna take this money, I'm gonna start a business, and I'm gonna employ all the unemployed folks in my town. That didn't happen, didn't happen. So I found that comment to be highly dumb. I found it to be dark, and it was missing the wisdom and insights of building wealth. Because the collective nation, if you just, you know, literally, if the United States of America had a lottery where every citizen got a million dollars cash, it would be less than six months for that million dollars cash would go to Lamborghini, Porsche, uh, Rolex. Essentially, the wealthy people would get the majority of that money within six months because the average person doesn't have an understanding of math. And more importantly, the average person doesn't have a very charitable heart. It's just not in it. Because I did a study and I researched a lot of people who won the lottery. And it's amazing how many of these people who won the lottery, they were working the job making 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars a year. They win the lottery, instant millionaire. And the donations and the charitable actions of these people who won this money have been very slim to none. It's the people who have worked really hard. It is the people who have built successful businesses that are the most charitable. These are the most charitable people. And it's kind of crazy how many people feel that someone should help them be successful. And this is one of the things that um, I have looked at over and over and over again. The number of people who need help let's go ahead and key this they need help to get moved to the next level but i actually had someone ask me do you offer a mentorship literally in every video i put out that i'm selling the intellectual property school i talk about what you have to do to get into the mental the intellectual property school and this individual completely missed that because essentially this is one of the things and i get this all the time i have a lot of people who want to work for me for they want to work for me. They want to learn what I do. They want me to pay them. They want me to pay them so they can sit in my basket, learn the things that I do, get this knowledge while I am paying them. 
this is a lot of people have this desire to be helped, but they do not want to spend any money. And this is one of the things that's going to perpetually keep the group poor. The individual who starts a business, who works hard, who manages their money well, these are going to be the wealthier people of society. And at the moment, that is roughly 10% of our society that is wealthy, doesn't have to worry about money, 10%. And the other 90% out here struggling. And there are many people who feel that there's the secret billionaire meeting in the corner office and they're coming up with all these plans and designs to keep you poor. Let me go ahead and tell you why that is absolutely one lie. And I consistently get that where there's these groups and there's these organizations and they're, they're designing these methodologies that keep you poor. I'm about to say something that's gonna come across as very fierce. If you're poor, it's because you choose to be poor. Now, how do I go ahead and ram rectify that? Number one, if you're poor in the United States of America in the year 2023, it is more than likely a personal choice and I will explain why it's a personal choice. Typically, the things that you did 10 years prior to the day will reflect where you would be in the future. So once again, you could be poor, you could be an immigrant. The things that you do, once you go ahead, let's say it's 2000, and the decisions, the actions that you did in 2000 will show ramifications in 2010. So let's say you're coming out of college, high school, you decide to go to college and you don't get what I call a loose degree. You go out and get a degree in something like chemical engineering. You get a degree in something that's hard and you go out and you get a very good career where you make 80 to $300,000 a year. And this was 22,000. And in 2010, you're like 30 something. You have a house, you have a wife and kids. You're making maybe two to $300,000 a year. And all of that manifested because of the decision that you had made 10 years prior. And a lot of people want to debate me because this whole narrative, they're trying to keep you poor. Oh, let me, let me go ahead and tell you something. Uh, I know a lot of really rich people. And you know what the really rich people be thinking about? They be thinking about themselves. They don't be thinking about broke dick Danny. It's like how we can keep broke dick Danny poor. Let me explain to you why broke dick Danny's poor. Remember that guy, they asked him if he won a million dollars and what he would do? I would get more hookers and blow. See, the thought process of where that person is mentally explains where they will be 10 years in the future, 20 years in the future, and 30 years in the future. And this whole notion of, and this is how a lot of people are selling stuff online. You don't have to create an email list. You don't, they're, they're like, pretty much pulling out all of the hard things that you have to do to make your business successful to sell their product because they know that most folks are lazy. Most folks are lazy. They don't want to do the work. This is why I have the Intellectual Property School app where you fill out some stuff and I can actually talk to you before we putting you into the school because a lot of folks are lazy. They're spending money looking for snap your fingers wealth. I can snap my fingers, I don't have to work, I don't have to do anything, and I can get wealthy. And this is why the mass is going to remain poor. And I, how do I know this? Years and years ago, I made the decision, and I was listening to a lot of Gary Vee at the time, and I decided to give away not one, not two, not, but 19 business courses. 19 business courses. And what I, under the delusion of listening to Gary Vander, Vanderchuk, and other people thought that these people would jump on the courses, get active, and start doing things. Didn't happen. 99, 95% of the people who signed up for those free courses did not open one course. Why is that? Remember how I said the average person is lazy. They don't wanna do anything. So you had access to a free course that will have taught you how to build a business, how to make money, and you actually, they did absolutely nothing with it. And this is why this collective wealth building ain't going to work because the collective 
is lazy. The collective doesn't want to do anything. Right now, Modern Wisdom, I think that's the YouTube channel, they're talking about this wave of men who are not working. I'm about to be very harsh, I'm about to be real critical. You know why they're not working? Because they're lazy bumps. They didn't want to go to college because college was too hard. They didn't want to go in the military because the military was too hard. They didn't want to do anything to elevate, to set themselves up for the future. They wanted to do nothing. All they do is sit at home and play video games and they want, and this same group of men, I'm gonna call them the worthless men of America. No skills, no ambition, no hustle, nothing going on. These men want the hottest and prettiest women as they're curled up in the basement in their mother's home. They want the hottest women and literally this group of men have created a posse, an army of do nothing, lazy men who literally come on YouTube and talk about how horrible women are and how you can't date these women. You wanna know why you can't date these women? Because you're a bum, you're a joker. You're not doing anything to build your life. You're not setting up your life. You're, you're just out here breathing oxygen and hoping that the finest, prettiest woman were like, well, I think he cute. That's what you're operating on. And this is why the masses will never be wealthy. The masses will always be poor, always be poor. And this is why I found that comment to be insulting, demeaning, and just straight up dumb. We gotta stop focusing on individual wealth and we need to come together and create this massive wave of wealth by working together. Men and women can't even get married and build a, a, a stable home life for their children. Yet we're supposed to collectively come together, work together and do the things that we need to do to build a collective wave of wealth. It ain't going to happen. But let me explain to you what is gonna happen. Because as I do these intellectual property scheduling calls, I'm seeing there's a group of people out here who really want something in life. They're willing to work for it. They're willing to pay for it. They're willing to do the things that they need to do to be extraordinarily successful in the future. And these people are gonna be in the intellectual property school. And there's a group of people, I have people, who would go in and play around. They would like fill out the application and leave stuff like, yeah, huh? And I mean, you know, it, it's real interesting. The people out there who are doing the least have the most hate for the folks who are doing the most. You wanna know why? Because when you're doing more, you're producing more, you're building something, you are a reflection of what they're not doing. And the truth hurts, the truth hurts. And th this is one of the things, because I keep seeing these messages like we should work together. I don't see it, you wanna know why? What, what do I see when I watch these, these videos, these guys who wanna be entrepreneurs? I wanna be my own boss, I don't wanna work for nobody. I don't wanna work for nobody. So I don't wanna work for anybody, I wanna be an entrepreneur, I wanna do my own thing. How are you gonna be part of the collective with that mindset? And this is one of the things that I've noticed over and over again. The dopest as followers make the best leaders. There's this false information that I was a natural born leader. I'm an alpha male. You know, most alpha males are poor. They may have that natural intestinal fortitude of being an alpha male, but the majority of them don't have no money. There's a group of different kind of alpha males and intellectual alpha males who do have the money. But once again, this whole notion of sitting together and we're gonna collectively build wealth together is a farce. It's a false house. It's a joke. It ain't gonna happen. And everyone with that mindset is poor. Everyone. And they're, they're poor because they have not made the proper decisions 10 years in the past to reflect on a better, healthier, wealthier life right now. So if you want to build your company, you wanna be wealthy, do it. Do not listen to these naysayers where you shouldn't be working on individual wealth. You should be part of the posse of the broken, poor posse. Don't do it, don't do it. Align your sights with people who are doing something, building something, creating something, so you can be part of that collective, so you can go ahead and get your life together, so you can be a powerful, stable, economically sound person 
that has the ability to influence other people who are around them. And this is one of the things we're getting ready to do. Uh, as I said, in the intellectual property school, I'm gonna start talking to all of my students. I'm going to have a better acknowledgement of the people in the course, and we're gonna start breaking this stuff down and making it more easy for people to do stuff. So if you wanna be part of the intellectual property school experience, what you should do is go below, fill out the app, the application. It's gonna be in the first comment. And if it's not in the first comment, it will be in the body of the description of the things that you need to do so you can go ahead and get into the intellectual property school. The link is below. My name is Glendon Cameron and I stand by everything I said in this video. The posse of poor people will never be wealthy and it's gonna be a handful of folks who are gonna do the work, build the businesses so they can be individually wealthy. I stand by that all day long. I'll see you guys in the next video.